Hey guys, welcome. Hope you're having a good week. Just want to talk to you about uh, some uh, conclusions I've come to over the years of, of being in the Word and pursuing God as diligently as my failing flesh will allow and as errant as my insights tend to be. But I, I believe these following seven things pretty astutely. And uh, for whatever they're worth, maybe you do or don't, that's okay. But this is what I've come to see after years of study. One, all people must be willing in their heart to do the will of God. That's John 7, 17. I think people discover what they want to discover. People receive what they want to receive. They get their hearts content. And if they are a seeker of truth who diligently pursue God, they will find him. But they have to be willing. They have to desire to, dis to discover it. I think that is a, a line that we can demarcate the whole world. Those who are willing to do the will of God, to pursue the will of God, and those who are not. Second, that the Bible understood by the Spirit of God is able to teach his children what he wants us to know when read by the spirit and the milk of the word is great for babes and necessary and the meat of the word is necessary for maturation and growth number three sound reliable biblical interpretations must always be supported by the contents of the bible as a whole you can't just take a chapter even, or a passage even, or a word even, and build an entire superstructure on it. It's got to be seen from Genesis to Revelation, and then understood in the context of that company. If it's not, and it's not supported substantially by that whole view, you're probably going to derive at some improper conclusions. And then relative to the Bible's information that agape love determines the value of a doctrine. If the doctrine does not produce, encourage, support, agape love from the reader, the doctrine ought to be challenged. God is love. Love is peaceable. Love is kind. He wants us to love. It's the new commandment. So if someone teaches a doctrine that is not founded on and surrounded by love, I would question that doctrine. Number four, that immature milk drinking believers and or non-believers in their heart will work hard to cause contention and to divide and they will divide through judgment and condemnations and criticism of beliefs and lifestyles and that mature eaters of the word meat eaters um, will grow and mature in love number five that the order of operation present in God's economy in the world today, contrary to sola scriptura, contrary to prophets and apostles living today to guide, lead and guide us, is one, the spirit is primary and preferential. The spirit. Why? Because the spirit and the fruit of the spirit is always love. So the spirit is primary and preferential. Two, the word of God is secondary and deferential. Meaning the word by the spirit brings faith and teaches us and we defer to it. But if we defer to the word above the spirit and its fruit, then what we say is the word justifies our ability to not love. That's why I don't put the word first. The fruit of the Spirit is love. The Word is subject to that Spirit. And everything that you read and interpret must amount to or produce agape love. The next thing is that church history with its early church fathers is tertiary at best 
and inferential. You know, um, it contains error. It contains stuff that's not correct. You can test almost all of them. But essentially, it's just something that you can make inference to. And then finally, brick and mortar religion is unnecessary and inconsequential at the end of the day. Why? Because God does not judge you if you are a Catholic or a Mormon or a Baptist. He judges you on your heart and what you sowed uh, in your life. Number six, I believe doctrines divide that everyone is responsible personally for what they believe and that all true believers will allow people the grace to stand and believe on what they choose to um, without criticism and without division. And I think by this, you can know who true believers are. And then finally, number seven, I'm convinced that this life is a proving ground. It was a proving ground for Adam and Eve, the whole human race, those two people, the whole human race in the Garden of Eden. And it was a proving ground for them. They decided whether they would follow God's will or they would follow their own. I believe that Jesus brought all of us back to a proving ground state and that I stand by Galatians 6, 7, where God says, uh, where Paul writes, be not deceived. God is not mocked for whatsoever a person sows that he shall also reap. Those are seven things I stand on today. You guys have a great week. We love you.